The 9800X3D is here and it's making waves as a gaming powerhouse. While it will perform almost to its max potential right out of the box, I'm going to show you how to squeeze the maximum performance out of this amazing chip. In today's video, I'll walk you through everything you need to get the best performance. Updating your BIOS, choosing the right motherboard and RAM, tweaking BIOS settings and more. And of course we'll dive into some benchmarks to see how much of a difference these optimizations make. Let's get started. Alright, first things first, updating your BIOS and chipset drivers is crucial for the 9800X3D. Without the latest up Updates, you might miss out on performance gains or face stability issues. Here's how to do it. Go to your motherboard manufacturer's website and look for the support page on your particular board and then click the latest BIOS update, download it to a USB drive and follow your board's specific process for updating. Most modern boards have a simple BIOS flashback feature and it's super convenient. If you need more detailed guidance, I've made a quick one minute tutorial video on this process. Click the link in the upper right hand corner to check it out. You can usually also grab the chipset update from this page or the way I prefer to do it is to head over to AMD's website and use the automated tool that AMD provides. Install that and you're ready to go. With these updates, you're ensuring your system is ready to handle the 9800X3D's full potential. The 9800X3D is designed for AM5 motherboards and choosing the right one depends on your needs and budget. When AM5 first launched, I compared A620 versus B650 versus X670E boards. And when it comes to gaming performance, the motherboard you select doesn't make much of a difference. Click the link in the upper right hand corner to see that comparison in detail. For most users, I personally recommend going with the B650. It offers great performance, plenty of features for modern hardware, and doesn't cost much more than A620 boards. However, if you're looking to keep costs as low as possible, A620 boards still deliver nearly identical gaming performance. On the other hand, if you want additional features like more PCIe lanes or advanced connectivity, consider the X670 or X870 boards. And for enthusiasts who want the absolute best without worrying about value, the E variants are the way to go. When it comes to RAM, the 9800X3D doesn't need the absolute fastest modules thanks to its massive L3 cache. The sweet spot, in my opinion, is DDR5 6000 MHz with CL30 or even 32. This offers great performance without overpaying. I've done a 32GB for a 64GB comparison and found no gaming benefit to going beyond 32. For gaming focus builds, 32 is more than enough, but if you want to splurge, go ahead and get 48 or 64. I've done RAM speed comparisons with the 58 and 7800X. CDs in the past and in those tests RAM speed doesn't affect performance very much if at all with these CPUs. If you want to see those detailed comparisons click the links in the upper right hand corner or in the video description. I'm expecting the same results with this series of chips but I will do a 9800X3D specific RAM test in the near future. But basically what it boils down to is if you're on a budget don't worry about going slightly lower on speed or higher on latency you'll still get excellent results. Alright, so I'm in my BIOS. I'm going to hit F2 to get into the advanced mode. First thing I'm going to do is turn on the X3D Turbo mode. Each motherboard manufacturer will have a different name for this. It's usually going to be called X3D Turbo or Turbo Gaming Mode or something along those lines. Next, I'm going to go into Advanced CPU Settings and disable SMT mode. After that, I go into Precision Boost Overdrive. And we're going to set it to Advanced. Change the PBO limits to Motherboard. Boost clock override positive at 200. Next, I'm going to scroll down to curve optimizer. And I'm going to select all cores. Create a negative curve at a magnitude of 40. I've been running minus 40 since launch day. Everything's been stable. I've been testing minus 60 for the past few days and it's still been stable. If you want to start at 40, I don't blame you. It seems like it's a safe setting for these chips. But um, yeah, start at 40 and if you want to keep pushing it, try minus 45, minus 50 and so on. All right, next we're going to go back one step and set the overdrive scaler to 5x. And that's been working out pretty good for me. Moving on to my memory settings, I'm running SK Hynix A dies here. If you get the recommended set in the video description below, you should be able to hit the same timings. So I'm running at 6000 mega transfer per second, F clock at 2200 megahertz running the U clock at 1 to 1 with the M clock. And for the memory secondary timings, here's what I'm running, 32, 48, 48, 32. And for the advanced timings, here's what I'm running, TRC 50, TWR 72, TREF 50,000, TRFC 1, 600, TRFC 2 auto, TRFC SB auto, TRTP 14, TRRD L10, TRRD S4, TFA at 24, TWTRL at 16, TWTRS at 4, TRDRD SCL at 4, TRDRD SC 
SD and DD at auto, TWRWRSCL at one, TWRWRSCSD DD at auto, TWRRD six, and TRDWR at 20. Moving on to the voltages, the VCore SOC I set at 1.29, VDDIO is at 1.4, VDD is at 1.65, and VDDQ is at 1.4. Everything else is on auto. Then I go into IO ports and make sure that above 4G decoding is on and resizable bar support is enabled and lastly what I'll do is save the profile here so I can reaccess it easily at any time so that covers my BIOS changes and all that's left is to boot up so the big question is is it worth tuning the 9800 X3D for Tarkov I'll be running benchmarks to give you the definitive answer here's the build I'm using a high-end setup featuring the 9800 X3D paired with the RTX 4090 to ensure there are no bottlenecks from other components this way we can see the CPU truly put to work the basic specs are on screen and you can find the detailed specs in the video description for the performance comparison, I'm using my Pure 80 preset, which you can see on screen now. If you want a detailed breakdown of optimization and settings recommendations, check out my Tarkov optimization guide by clicking the link in the upper right hand corner now. To measure performance, I ran tests on labs offline with no AI for a baseline of CPU performance. Then I moved to the brutal streets of Tarkov offline with no AI to assess performance in asset heavy environments. Finally, I tested streets online on live servers to capture real world gameplay numbers. I performed three runs at 1080, 1440, and 4K resolutions for each scenario and averaged the results to give you the most accurate data. So moving on to the numbers, performance increase is moderate across all metrics in 1080p on labs offline with 9.1% higher average FPS, 18.9% better 1% lows and 19.5% higher 0.1% lows in tuned settings. In 1440p, the performance boost is more noticeable with 11.1% increase in average FPS, 16.1% improvement in 1% lows, and 16.2% for 0.1% lows. The most significant improvement was seen in 4K at 28.1% higher average FPS, 21.6% better 1% lows, and 11.7% higher 0.1% lows. In streets offline mode, in 1080, average FPS saw a modest gain of 8.67%, while 1% and 0% lows were improved by 11.77 and 12.48% respectively. In 1440, average FPS increased by about 7%, and both 1% and 0.1% lows showed strong improvements of 10.63 and 12.96%. The biggest gains were at 4K resolution with 17.35% higher average FPS on tuned settings, and lows improving by 14.3 for 1%, and around 18% percent in the 0.1 percent lows taking the tests online on streets 1080 showed a 19.7 percent increase in average fps with the 1 percent low seeing the biggest improvement at 23.4 percent the 0.1 percent low improved by 10.7 percent on the tuned setup in 1440p i saw the highest overall gains with a 22.9 percent increase in average fps 33.9 percent increase in 1 percent lows and a whopping 36.4 percent increase in 0.1 percent lows in 4k there were more modest gains with the 12.3 percent increase in average fps 15.6 percent improvement in one percent lows and 14.9 percent boost in 0.1 percent lows so as you can see with the proper updates and settings the 9800 x3d shines as one of the best gaming cpus on the market bios updates and settings tweaks can actually make a significant difference in performance and if you're considering the cpu these optimizations ensure you're squeezing every ounce of performance out of this amazing chip if you found this video helpful drop a like and sub for more content like this if you've got questions drop them in the comments below. I'd love to hear about your builds and gains using these settings. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.